So how does it feel knowing that you hit the billion dollar mark? Mm, I think whatever the number is, you know, at the end of the day, that doesn't make you really happy. Doesn't? <laughs> Sounds no, like think... it'd make me happy. <laughs> Why don't you um, shift it on my way and let me run with it for a year. See how um, happy I am. I'll pass on that. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's like, you know, good skin or good hair or, you know, good personality or good teeth. It's just an asset. It doesn't really make you. Yeah. It's just an asset that, you know, you got to have money to, you know, just the biological and uh, you know, sustainability lifestyle. Uh, you got to have finances and money just to survive. But it's, it's not going to give, it's not going to make you happy, you know, and it's not going to give you joy. Um, you know, the joy you have with your seven kids is a different joy and a happiness that you're going to have by, you know, flying in a private jet. Yeah. Well, you know, when people get old and start to die, they're not worried about their money and their private <laughs> jets. They're usually worried about their kids and their family and their relationships. Yeah. So I always say relationships are really the source of, because everyone's after money. Yeah. And I say, well, listen, you get more money by getting more relationships because relationships produce money. That's where money comes from, really, relationships. Would you agree? I think relationships do um, provide for a lot of joy and happiness, especially, and most importantly, if you have a good relationship with yourself. You know, you can't mm. have mutual respect if you don't have self-respect. You can't have self-respect if you're not solid with yourself, you know, if you're not operating with integrity and goodness and kindness and living your life on nat natural uh, principles. But uh, Nicholas Taloub, you know, the black swan guy says, if, if you don't want any problems, don't have any friends, which I think is kind of interesting. But, you know, at the end of the day, the right friends with the right problems, even though they have problems, are, are still the way to go. So you, where'd you grow up? I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, but really Jeffersonville, Indiana, across the river. And did, what was your first success, Papa John's? Well, <sighs> No, the first success was really mixed lounge, but I got to track that back. Uh, I cut grass when I was eight years old, 10 years old with my grandfather's mower. And we made good money doing that. We painted gutters when I was 10 to 12. And uh, like you, my uh, I got in the solar heating business back in the 70s when it was, you know, not even really, it was kind of in its uh, infancy. You really? Know, incubation. We went bankrupt in that business. I uh, had a wine business. Um, my dad had nine businesses and all nine of them went bankrupt. And my grandfather had three and they all were successful. So I got to watch what it felt like to fail, which I don't know if you've had any struggles in business, but you get your learning from your burning and in business. And then I got to watch uh, my grandfather had success in everything he did. <clears throat> and uh, so I didn't realize that was the training ground um, on intuitively what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, my dad had a bar, it was going to bankruptcy, mixed lounge, uh, $64,000 in debt, selling 50 cent beers. And within a week, I went, heck, I can do this. This is like, it was like the most natural, intuitive thing I've ever done in my life. You know, get the beer cold, get the McBurgers hot, um, have great staff, take care of the staff, clean the place up, get activities, uh, Euchre tournament on Thursday, <clears throat> little king night on Tuesday, three beers for a dollar. And then we had a pool tournament on Sunday, watching football. And um, we got that bar out of bankruptcy, took over October. Labor Day weekend of 83, and we were out of bankruptcy January 4th, January 1st of uh, 84. Um, but I was lucky that I stumbled into something that I was good at. And I had this dream of the pizzeria from Ball State because I love making pizzas since I was 15. And so we started selling pizzas in the broom closet in the back of that bar. And all of a sudden I had something I was good at, business, and something I loved to do, which was making pizza. And we just grew it from there, 1600 bucks. No kidding. Yeah. You know, my dad uh, started, a, had a tavern and he started making pizzas out of the back and it became pretty successful for a while. Some guy came in, small town, uh, drank a bunch, went and crashed on a motorcycle, sued my dad. Apparently he had just canceled or my, my uncle had just canceled the insurance last month to save a little extra money and it just put him out of business. But there was a lot of money in pizza. Like there's, those are profitable things. 
Yeah, but I think it gets back to what you're really, you know, what what you're God gifted at, what you know, what you really, you know, some people clean tea, some people are uh, architects, some people are engineers, some people do podcasts. I mean, just find something you love to do and you're good at and work it to the bone. But those early days of cutting grass, painting gutters, let's take um, your hometown hero, uh, Steve Wynn. His dad ran a, uh, what, a bingo parlor? And then he's over the golden nugget, you know, trying to learn the business. And then he creates the strip. And I look back on the days of Rocky Sub Pub, washing dishes and making pizza, cutting that grass and, and working my grandfather's acreage over in Louisville. The, the life lessons you learn at <clears throat> minimum wage and when you're broke and to be accountable and save and try to get ahead, um, those were invaluable when I got to, you know, store three, four, and five at Papa John's. So it was really the, the fundamentals of uh, work hard, be accountable, save, um, you know, spend less than you make. Those things were, you know, when I was six, seven, eight years old, instilled in me from my mom and my, my grandfather that I think really helped us um, make Papa John's a big company. Um, all, all big companies start out with one, you know, Ford, um, Microsoft, Gates, um, Jobs. Apple. Light speed. There you go. Um, and so all big companies at one time were small companies. And I think to really be successful, if you could just run a big company with the approach to product and people and service, the way you did uh, run a small company, I think you'd be even more successful. We used to talk about we were America's largest independent. We were public. We had to play the Wall Street game and all that. But that's a simple game. You just under promise and over deliver. Um, what they do is they have you, Wall Street has you chase your tail. They, they, they try to push your number up and then you're chasing the number and then you're forced to do little knee jerk things. You know, not do things right with regards to product and people. And before you know it, you've got problems and you need to crash the stock. So we always played the Wall Street game, but we always were conservative in our projections. We always beat our projections, but we really ran Papa John's like a family business with regards to the employees, the people, um, the vendors, the suppliers, our communities, our franchisees, and the uh, same with regards to the product, the authenticity of the better ingredients, better pizza promise. How many uh, eventually popped up? When I left, there was 5,200 restaurants. I think today they're at 5,500. Yeah. And, and you know, you think, I thought the bigger you get, it would get easier. You know, I just thought you, and scale does help. I mean, scale, you take the element of time out of the picture. You know, when you're working for 10 bucks an hour, the element of time, you know, is in 60 minute increments. When you're doing $4 billion in sales and you divide that by 24 hours, the scale of the numbers get so big that, you know, a tenth or half a percent one way, Versus, or, you know, versus a positive way accumulates. And then, you, you know, if you do it the right way and you get on the right side of that, you, you can accumulate dollars to do, to do really big things. But <clears throat> I left the company about four years ago. And the first thing they did when I left the company is they took out the principal leadership course we had. We called it Go Left. We ran the company on universal natural law principles, values, ethics, integrity, mutual respect, kindness, collaborative alliances, win-wins. Uh, that, they took that out first day. And the second thing they did was they took out the measurement system. And if you don't measure, measure it, they won't do it. So we had a system in place that measured how many times the phone rang, uh, was the driver nice, how long did it take to get the pizza, <clears throat> what was the quality of the food, was it good? And um, if the, the folks in the store got that right, we bonused them. But they took out the principles of the organization and they took out the measurements, uh, measuring system, the matrix for measuring quality. That's the first two things that the corporate, um, you know, folks did. And uh, since then, the, the, the deterioration of morale, they've lost all their good people. There's no institutional knowledge with regards to pizza in that company. And they've lost the product quality. I saw two days ago where it was ranked one of the worst uh, foods for you um, in the whole spectrum. So they're now getting negative press because they're not walking the talk on the better ingredients, better pizza promise that we lived for 34 years while I was there.